BKFC, BKB, BYB. These are all organizations that are dedicated to the long lost art of bare knuckle boxing, or as some call it, bare knuckle fighting. Before these groups came around, bare knuckle boxing wasn't really a thing in the world anymore, at least not officially. It kind of died out a long time ago. You may have had some guys who on occasion would get together in a gym or maybe even a garage and box without gloves on, but that's not quite the same as a sanctioned event that can be organized and promoted above ground. Because of the underground nature of these events, it made it kind of difficult to have any talent that was long lasting and well known, but there was one man who would end up making a name for himself as an almost mythical figure in the bare knuckle boxing world, and his name was Bobby Gunn. During his career, he'd amass an undefeated record of over 70 bare knuckle boxing wins, and he'd even journey into the gloved boxing world where he took on the likes of James Tony and Roy Jones Jr. Now that all sounds really cool, but the thing about Bobby Gunn, and really anyone from those pre-promotion bare knuckle days, is that it's really impossible to verify anyone's claims, and because of this, people have called into question the validity of his record. Some people even call into question his validity as a fighter. What I want to do with this video is take a look at all of the fights that Bobby Gunn has taken part in that we can find on the internet, and try to determine how legit they all are. When I watch these fights, I'm going to be looking for two things, and one of them is going to be whether or not I feel like they're faking punches. I want to see that they're throwing with conviction, and that they're actually trying to hit each other. Number two is going to be whether or not I feel like anyone took a dive. If anyone really didn't get hurt, they just decided they didn't want to fight anymore for whatever reason. Now, I obviously can't speak with 100% certainty as to whether or not these fights are real or if there was anything fishy about them, but I can tell you what I see right in front of me with my own two eyes. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not going to make excuses in either direction, whether I'm trying to stick up for Bobby or whether I'm trying to trash him. I'm just going to tell you what I see regardless of what it is. And with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. Okay, so this first fight is actually going to be Bobby Gunn's last fight, at least to my knowledge. This was in the first ever BKFC card in 2018. We're going to go ahead, we're going to take a look. All right, so they're towing the line. That's how BKFC does it. They have you start in close. All right, so measured start from both of them. All right, Bobby throws a jab cross to the body. And he throws a jab cross hook all to the body. He ends up finishing with a liver shot and it knocks the guy down. And I gotta be honest with you. I don't know about that. You're, it really didn't look like he was throwing that hard. I feel like that shouldn't have hurt him as bad as it did. It doesn't take much on a liver shot. Don't get me wrong, but it does take something. And I don't think that something was really there. All right. So again, kind of stalking a jab from the other dude. And so that was an overhand right. An uppercut or a hook to the body followed by a hook to the head. And again, he really didn't look like he was throwing that hard. He really didn't look like he was throwing much. Um, the other guy just kind of sitting there. It almost looks like he's flopping a little bit. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. That one did look a tiny bit weird. I'm, I'm just being 100% honest with you. Um, it really didn't look like he was throwing with enough force to really hurt the guy, even if it was to the liver, like I said. Um, it kind of looked like, it kind of looked like how it looks when you're sparring very light with someone where you're trying to make sure you're flowing. You're trying to make sure that you're not all like robotic or anything like that, but you're really not throwing with power. You're pulling your punches back a lot when they end up landing. So if I had to draw a conclusion about this, I'll be honest with you. Um, it's a little bit strange. I'm not going to say that it's absolutely positively hundred percent fake. Technically, I can't really say anything like that because it's not like I was there. It's not like I, I sat down with anyone and spoke to anybody, but from an outsider's perspective, looking in, that was a little bit weird. That's just my opinion. All right, so this next one was in a garage somewhere. Um, I believe this was featured in the Rolling Stone, but I could be wrong. I remember the Rolling Stone years ago ended up doing a write-up on Bobby Gunn and Bare Knuckle Boxing, and uh, I believe they ended up filming a fight of his. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at this regardless of which one it is. So there's no ring or anything. They're just sort of fighting in a circle of guys, which is uh, interesting. So a measured start. Doesn't really look like the other dude's trying to hit him right now, but it, it just started. You know, I got, I got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes you're just feeling a guy out. You're throwing things out there to just see how he reacts and try and find your range on somebody. All right. So that punch to the body, it didn't quite land, but he did look like he was thrown with conviction. I'll say that he, he landed. It's just he landed more on the arm. So that hook right there was a, a little bit interesting. Um, Huh. Okay.
Okay, so those punches to the body didn't really look like they were thrown with conviction. I'm talking about by the other guy. He kind of looked like he was just sort of trying to touch him. That was with a little bit of conviction. That was with some conviction as well. Um, he didn't load up on that left hook, though. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. And he also, I don't believe, hit him in the face. I don't know why this guy is, uh, I don't know why this guy is on the ground, like, looking like he's, like, he got hit in the face. He's kind of like here, like, uh, uh, as if he's, like, bleeding or something. That's the end of the fight. Um, that was a little bit strange. I gotta be honest with you. That was a weird one as well. I did see some actual punches from Bobby where it seemed like he was trying to do damage. Uh, there could be a bunch of different explanations for this. One of them could be that the other guy showed up, didn't realize what he was getting himself into, and he ended up getting beat up. Uh, Bobby may have showed up not realizing that that guy didn't really want to fight that bad. There could be thousands of explanations for what happened in this video, and I'm not trying to come to any hard line conclusions or anything like that, because after all, like I said, I can't really say whether or not it was fake. I'm just saying that this looked a little bit weird to me as well. Okay, so this next fight is Bobby Gunn versus Richie Stewart, and it's interesting because this is actually at a promotion. I didn't know there were any promotions before 2018, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at this now. All right, so they're starting in their corners instead of in the middle of the ring. All right, they touched him up, sporting, sporting touch of hands. All right, so measured start from both of them. There's a jab to the body from, uh, from uh, Richie. Couple of jabs. Kind of difficult to see if they were actually trying to hit each other, but like I said, it's the beginning of the fight. I don't want to sit here in the beginning of the fight and get mad because they're not really trying that hard. You're feeling your, you're feeling your opponent out at that point. So just sort of, just sort of, uh, testing each other out. So there was a few punches from Bobby Gunn. Um, it was hard to see if any of them landed. I don't think any of those jabs to the head were even necessarily meant to land. So one thing, one thing that kind of makes me feel like this is real, other than some of the punches that I've seen thus far, is the fact that they really are biting on those feints and things like that. Uh, they're acting like there is a certain degree of danger. And it, if there isn't a degree of danger, it's kind of difficult to emulate like there is one because there, there's nothing for you to really be afraid of. But when you know that you could get bopped, when you know that you could end up eating a punch, uh, that makes it a lot more tense, and because of that, you kind of act like it. All right, so that was round one. Um, not a whole lot of action, like I said. Maybe they're just trying to uh, maybe they're just trying to feel each other out. Uh, this is round two right here. I feel like the rounds are a little bit short. That's interesting. All right, so Richie kind of walking Bobby down. Couple of jabs and. Richie ended up falling back after that second jab. I wonder if he just kind of stumbled because he was reacting or if he actually got hit. It's kind of difficult to see from the angles that we're at when these punches are landing and things like that. That's, and it sucks because that's really what I'm trying to like make sure of. Those landed. That cross down the middle definitely landed. You saw, you saw the sudden deceleration of Bobby's fist. Uh, and you also saw Richie fall back. Oh yeah. Uh huh. That hook to the body landed. So right now they definitely are throwing punches at each other and really hard shots. And you'll notice if you compare that liver shot to the liver shot from the first one we watched, uh, there's a marked difference there. That, that liver shot right there from Bobby was meant to actually hurt. And so was that cross from, uh, from Richie. All right. So that's the end of round two. All right. So for some reason it's really dark in there. I don't know why. Yeah, that was another hook to the body. Bobby Gunn seems to favor that hook to the body, that liver shot. And I mean, it's a good shot to favor, especially in bare knuckle, you know? Both of them seem to favor going to the body, and it's most likely because they're afraid they're going to end up breaking their fists, which is actually something you don't see as much of in modern bare knuckle, which is, which is an interesting thing. A little bit of hand fighting, some punches. Yeah, these guys, these guys are going at it. They're trying to, they're trying to hurt each other with their punches. Yeah. So Richie ended up getting knocked down. It was with a hook to the head and that was a real hook to the head. Again, you saw the deceleration of his arm upon hitting. Um, you also saw how Richie's head whipped when he ended up getting hit. That was real. 
That was real. I don't, I don't think he's necessarily flopping. I do think it's a little bit interesting that they let him try and get up and then fall over, but then they're letting him fight again just to get hit again. Um, I do believe that that was legit, though. I do believe that both of those were legit. I mean, you can see the instant replay right there. It seemed like it kind of glanced a little bit, but it also hit him in a spot that is really easy to hurt somebody in. And in addition to that, he could have still been a little bit hurt from that hook that definitely ended up wobbling him. Um, so because of this, I'm going to say that there's no doubt in my mind that this fight is 100% real. I don't think anyone necessarily tried to flop or anything like that. It was a competitive fight, and you even saw Richie walking Bobby Gunn down for most of the fight, especially during round two is when I noticed that. So this, without question, real in my opinion. This is probably the most famous Bobby Gunn fight that you can find on the internet. And this is Bobby Gunn versus Ernest Jackson. And it's famous for a couple of reasons. For one thing, Ernest Jackson apparently at one point was one of Jay-Z's bodyguards, from what I understand. Another thing is that this is the video that a lot of people point to when they say that Bobby Gunn is not legit. And that's partially why I saved it for last. We're going to go ahead, we're going to take a look at this, and hopefully we're going to see if this is actually going to hold up. All right, so they're about to get started now. Couple of pawing jabs from Ernest. And like I said, I, I can't take the first few seconds of the fight and, and make a, make a conclusion out of that, you know? All right. So the way they're moving right now, um, like I said, Ernest doesn't seem to be that worried about landing his jab. I think he's just trying to keep Bobby on the outside, but the way they're moving, especially in relation to the punches that are coming in, that kind of tells me that this is legit because it's kind of hard to fake the stress and the movements that you will use when somebody's throwing a punch at you. If you don't feel like you're in real danger, it's going to look fake. This looks real to me though. Ooh, okay. So he really looked like he was trying to make sure he hit him. See, that was, that was some pretty good head movement from Bobby. And, and that's another reason why I can't just say that since certain punches aren't landing that it's fake. Because both of these guys have really good defensive capabilities. You know, they're, they're making sure they don't get hit. Ooh, that landed. That punch landed. The, uh, the, the cross to the body. Um, I think it landed on the arm, but he still threw it, it hit, and you could tell he was thrown with bad intentions. You can usually tell if somebody ends up getting hit um, by one, the deceleration of the arm that the person is punching with, and two, when their head snaps back. Like that, that jab landed. You saw, you saw the sudden deceleration, and you saw the head snap back. Uh, I don't think any of those punches that he just threw a second ago landed, but they did come close, and they were with bad intentions. Those looked like they landed. Oh, uh, and you see they, they ended up tying up. And that's another thing that tells me that, uh, that this is a legit fight. Because tying up is something you do when you feel like you're in danger. Either A, the person is in a range that you don't like and you want the ref to force a break, uh, so that you can get a range that favors you a little bit more. Or you're hurt or you're tired and you want it to stop. Uh, so still got jabs from Ernest. Oh, looks like he got caught there. It looks like Bobby threw one right up the middle and he ended up, uh, he ended up, uh, catching him. Couple of jabs from Ernest. Couple of jabs from Bobby. Hmm. Yeah, he's, he's trying to, he's, they're letting him wrestle it up. So short uppercut to the body. I don't think it really hurt him or anything like that. That, that landed. That was good. So now they're fighting in the clinch. You know, and, and they are digging those shots. The, oh, I think he might have hit him in the back of the head. I don't, I don't think it was necessarily on purpose, but I think he might have got him in the back of the head. As I was saying, they were fighting in the clinch and they were digging those shots. The thing about the clinch going to the body, it can be kind of hard to really hurt someone, but it doesn't mean that you can't try. All right, so I'm not sure if that was a punch that wobbled him or if he just kind of was off balance. Like, I mean, the punch wobbled him no matter what, but he may have just been off balance. I don't think it's that he got hit and he started, like, you know, getting woozy or anything. Oh, yeah. No, no that was that was real. 
he went to the body and then he came to the head, both with some actually like decently hard shots, you know. Um, I think Ernest got caught when he didn't expect it and he ended up falling over. He may not be absolutely positively like wobbly right now, but uh, he ended up getting hurt a little bit. Working the inside. Oh, yeah. So, hook to the body, hook to the head. Again, both of them were decently hard. They were smooth, right? And I do think Bobby was holding back a little bit, but it was smooth, right? And it was just hard enough. Now, you see Ernest really trying to dig the body. This is because he's desperate. He doesn't want to be there right now. He's trying to do anything he can to try and hurt Bobby. Again, the... Okay, we, we, got, a, we got a high crotch. Sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes you got to kind of let the dude know, hey, I could do this if I wanted. So jab cross right up the middle. Another jab cross up the middle. I don't think that one landed. Bang. He ends up disengaging from the clinch and he throws the hook and that's what ended up doing it. Uh, it seems like the dude's done. I don't think they should let him fight. Yeah, no, they, they aren't letting him fight. And you know what? That was legit. I'll be honest with you. Like, like I fully believe that that was legit. Um, after looking at it myself, I saw a bunch of things. I saw, I saw actual defense. I saw actual offense. I saw tactics that were being used by both of them. I think it was real. I'm going to be honest with you. Yes, I do. And that's because even if his entire bare knuckle career was fake, which I don't think it is. We just saw some examples that look very real. But even if it was fake, he had a gloved boxing career as well, where he took on real guys in real fights that we can verify. With that said, though, I think what needs to happen is if there's any videos at all that are worthy of putting on the internet, I think Bobby Gunn should probably put videos on the internet. Now, I understand that underground bare knuckle boxing wasn't exactly legal, but the thing is, how illegal was it and how enforceable was the law that states that you're not allowed to have underground bare knuckle boxing matches? Because really, you see tons and tons of examples on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere of assault and battery happening every single day. And these are all things that we see on the internet that I 100% guarantee are not going to be enforceable if police officers took a look at them. I can understand if they didn't have the tape recorder at every single fight that he ever had, but I'm sure they had it at more fights than he's letting on. I guess what it comes down to is who keeps track of these things? Who verifies them to be true? And that's an honest question for you. But that's all that I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and also sub for more. If you have anything to say, leave a comment down below. If you have anything you want to ask me, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at Scott Sullivan MMA. I love doing videos for questions that people ask me. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, good luck out there.